Mr. Chair, if I could speak to the motion now. Yep, go ahead. I've started so a I, I speaking list. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, first, uh, Mr. Chair, this is the deadline. Uh, it is today that, you know, we know that there's 200,000 loans at uh, businesses that CFIBs identified that just can't pay the loan, that won't be able to meet the deadline today. These are businesses that close their doors to protect public health. And you've heard me at the committee cite that the PBO uh, costed out what the one-year extension would cost, and it's actually roughly about 4.2% um, uh, decrease of outsourcing costs to the highly paid consulting firms that are getting contracts with the government. Um, this is outsourcing that has doubled under the Conservative government when they were in power and gone up fourfold under the Liberal government. So, Mr. S uh, Mr. Chair, like 4.2% decrease in outsourcing would cover the cost of the extension. Small businesses and their workers are the backbone of the Canadian economy. They provide good paying jobs, jobs with flexibility and familiarity that aren't possible in many corporate settings and jobs in rural and remote places where other work just isn't available. They aren't giant businesses full of corporate headquarters in, in Courtney or Bowser. So many of my constituents are employed by small and medium sized businesses. They hold up the local economy, provide essential goods and services, give locals much greater uh, commerce options and in every community in Canada, small and medium sized businesses are essential to the culture and community. They sell local goods, they provide community centre services, they offer meeting places and celebration spots, they offer artists a chance to share their work and fund their passion. During the pandemic, like I said, small businesses around the country stepped up, they closed their doors to protect public health, they lost income for long periods to save Canadian lives. They took on losses to keep their workers employed. And it's not just COVID. They faced so many hardships in the last few years from supply chain issues to climate emergencies, like the fires in my riding at Courtney, Alberni. And many of these small businesses were operating already on razor thin margins. And with so much lost revenue over the last few years, they need help catching up. They closed their doors to protect public health, and many of them took on losses to keep their workers employed. Communities, especially rural ones, depend on local business, and so do the people employed by them. The SEPA program has been an absolute lifeline for these businesses, and we need to make sure it doesn't turn into an even worse hardship for them. Data from CFIB, like I said, found that losing the forgivable portion puts the future of up to 200,000 small businesses in jeopardy. They found that only one third of the businesses they say have the money to repay their loans for today's deadline. One third say they don't have the money and they plan to borrow, which is extremely costly, costly to them. They say one third, they don't have the money and can't secure a loan. Extending the deadline will give these businesses one more year to keep reducing their principal okay. without being burdened okay, by that, ever increasing Marriott. interest. Maybe you could put yourself on mute so I, I can guess. finish. I'm sorry. If the Liberals keep refusing to extend the deadline with the forg forgivable uh, portion intact, these businesses will have to find even more money to spend on interest. And that will force them to make hard choices that could put their workers' jobs at risk. Well, the Liberals have been outright refusing this extension. The Conservatives have been absolutely silent. And it seems like they both don't want to admit the truth out loud, that they don't want to support small businesses right now, but have no problem helping rich corporations get off the hook. Instead, the dead deadline needs to be extended to the, allow them to spend the money they need on scaling up, keeping their workers employed and making investments that benefit their local economies. We can't fully calculate the economic and social benefits of these businesses remaining open and putting that money into their businesses and communities instead of interest payments. But we know it's huge. So I'm asking the committee to support this motion in support of small business people in their riding and doing the right thing. If they go to any restaurant in their riding, they're going to find they're having challenges recovering from COVID-19, that many businesses in the hospitality industry have not even made a dent in making a payment in repayment of their loans. And they're just finding their feet now. So I'm urging the committee to support this motion. 